Hi, I'm Bill Johnston with Kansas Corn. And today we're going to talk about growing degree days. Now, first of all, I'm going to assume that if you're watching this video, you've already done the math problems associated with growing degree days. And I don't need to explain that because hopefully you understood that. What we're going to talk about is how farmers use that information. First of all, let's start out with some basic information about growing degree days. See, it's not anything new. Actually, it's been around since the 1730s. It was developed by a French scientist named Raymer. And a couple things that I want you to know as we progress forward is, first of all, growing degree days, also called growing degree units, sometimes called heat units, sometimes called thermal units, I'm going to refer to as growing degree units moving forward. They are accumulated from when a seed is planted until it reaches black layer. And we're going to talk about black layer a little bit more in, the, in a, a minute or so. But it also assumes that the plant has adequate water and nutrients available to grow. One of the first things I want to make sure that you understand, though, as we go through this, is that you know how an, a farmer uses this information. I mentioned the black layer a little earlier, and I want you to see actually what that is. In this case, the farmer will go to an ear of corn. They'll take a, an ear of corn, and they will scrape the end of it off. And they'll see that there's a black spot there, or the black layer. That black layer appears at about 30% moisture in corn, and it indicates physiological maturity. At physiological maturity, that means this plant is done growing. It's done taking in water, it's done taking in nutrients, and now it's going to start drying down. As I said, at this point, it's around 30% moisture. We need this corn to get to around 15% moisture if we're going to harvest it for grain. And under normal conditions, that's going to take somewhere around 20 days. I said a little earlier that it was really important that you understood how farmers used growing degree units. And trust me, they understand how they work. They understand the importance of growing degree units. They understand how they are used in the development of varieties of corn and other plants. But I do want you to understand right up front, farmers don't actually use the term growing degree units very often when they're visiting with others in the ag industry. When they're visiting with their seed dealer or their agronomist or each other, they rarely refer to growing degree units. What they actually usually talk to each other about is whether it's a short season corn or a medium season or a full season corn. Or they'll refer to the number of days that that season, that, that corn takes to go from planting to black layer. For example, they may say it's a hundred day corn or 110 day corn. That's how they visit with each other in reference to growing degree units. Do they understand it? Oh sure they do. It's just not a term that they use in a casual discussion among other farmers and their seed dealers. So let's link these terms together. Farmers terms and growing degree units using 110 day corn. For example, let's say the farmer decides that he's gonna plant on April 20th. Well, in actual days, 110 days, we are at black layer or physiological maturity at August 10th in actual days. Remember that corn growth requires 50 degrees. That's why your base was 50 in the math problem. So on April 20th, the farmer plants his crop, he can expect in two or three actual days under the right conditions that that seed's gonna germinate. 
But it's not like that seed's just laying there, and on the third day it says, hey, I better sprout. It has requirements of growing degree units. In most cases, it needs 70 growing degree units to germinate or to sprout. The same is true of emergence. That normally happens at four or five days. And it needs 100 growing degree units. Well, these don't always move together like this. For example, let's say that on April 20th, the farmer plants and it's 50 degrees. And the next day, it's a high of 49. And the next day, a high of 47. And the next day, a high of 45. Well, see, now those that seed is laid there for four days and has not accumulated any growing degree units because it never got above 50. So days are accumulating in this example, but growing degree units are not. When farmers say 110 day corn, they're saying over long term averages under typical situations, the situations aren't always typical. And because of that, 110 day corn saying that may not be accurate. But growing degree units are allocated or accumulated day after day after day and they stay consistent. So in this variety, as I said, if we have 70 growing degree units, then we get germination. If we have 100 growing degree units, we have emergence. If we move down into the vegetative stage, which is when that corn is growing and putting on leaves, to get all the way through that stage, which basically runs from emergence to pollination, we need 750 growing degree units. For pollination to occur with this particular variety that I'm using as an example, we need 1,150 growing degree units. For it to reach black layer, we're at 2,700 growing degree units. This will stay consistent, but in the example I gave you, 110 degree days may not be accurate in the end because when we started, we weren't accumulating any growing degree units. Farmers rely on the professionals, like their seed dealer and or their agronomist, and their own experiences to find the products that best meets their needs. Growing degree units is a starting point. They're also going to look at things like yield, drought tol tolerance, disease resistance, and lots of other possibilities that can help narrow down the choice of the corn variety that they want to use. Seed dealers understand completely what farmers are talking about when they make reference to 100-day corn or 120-day corn. And I'm going to show you this by showing you this website provided by a very popular seed dealer. I've already went in and pre-selected my zip code and pre-selected my crop, which is corn. If I look at this site, there's nothing on here about growing degree units. But if I look to the left, I see relative maturity from 101 to 120 days. See, they're talking in farmer language here. They're talking about 101 day short season corn to 120 day or full season corn. And on this site for Northeast and Eastern Kansas, it gives me all the options that they would suggest for me. But using some farm terminology, I want to narrow my choices. I'm going to slide this scale down and I only want varieties that are 101 to 105 days maturity. Well, there are my choices. Or let's say that I'm only interested in more full season corn from 115 days to 120 days. Change it on this sliding scale, 
and look at the varieties I have to choose from. See, seed companies understand farm terminology. They're going to use growing degree units to figure out these varieties, but they're going to put it in terms that farmers use when they relate to them. So in conclusion, how does the farmer use this? How does a farmer use growing degree units? We can use it in several ways. I've given you about three examples here that can help that farmer manage his crops. For example, he may want to use the GDUs to spread his harvest out, use different varieties of different day lengths so that all the corn isn't ready to harvest at the exact same time. He may want to move the time that the plant pollinates around so that it's not pollinating under the worst weather, condi weather conditions for pollination. The farmer may have to adjust for weather. For example, let's stay th say that it stays wet until mid to late May. Well, he's going to have to adjust. He probably can't use full season corn anymore. And a dozen other possibilities. Hopefully, you now understand how farmers use growing degree units to improve their management. Have a good day.